I'm hosting a high power rocketry altitude contest and this is your official invitation to participate. As some of you may know, I teamed up with Wildman Rocketry earlier this year to release a 2.6 inch diameter version of one of my favorite rocket kits ever, the Wildman Punisher. So I thought what better way to introduce it to the world than by hosting a contest at one of my favorite launches that would be Airfest in Argonia, Kansas. I know a lot of people bought these rockets so thank you very much for picking one up and if you have the rocket you're more than welcome to participate in the contest but I thought maybe I should go over the rules. This contest has been announced for quite some time but I decided that I should make this video to make sure we are all on the same page here because I keep getting a lot of questions and I have to make some answers. Make some answers? That's not the right word. I'm looking at myself in the camera. I'm not thinking while I talk. Someone said my microphone was big. They're like, oh, I like the giant microphone. This is a normal size mic. It's an SM58. It's as standard as a microphone could possibly get. I'm getting off topic here. The first thing you should note is that if your rocket is going to go over 20,000 feet, you need to submit a high altitude application at cloudbusters.org. The link will be in the description to do so. And I know what you're thinking, 20,000 feet is almost impossible with the 2.6 inch Punisher. But for those of you that are really convinced you have it in the bag, I have some news. I know of at least one high altitude application that's already been filed for this contest. Do with that information what you will. Now, let's talk about the rules of the contest. And I will note quickly that if you have any further questions after this video, there is a link in the description to the Rocket Vlogs Discord. It is free for everybody to join. And that link will be in the description, okay? So I'm gonna have to update it because I let it expire every seven days so we don't get a bunch of spam because I don't really have time to full-time moderate a Discord group. Anyway, let's get into the official rules of the Rocket Vlogs Airfest Punisher 2.6 contest, which by the way, has a grand prize courtesy of our friends over at Wildman Rocketry is a six inch Punisher kit, the ultimate Punisher with a 98 millimeter motor mount. Awesome rocket, awesome prize. Thank you, Tim, for throwing that into the prize pool. And uh, we'll see if we can come up with something for runner up as well. Now, let's get into it. The official, official rules. The day of the contest is Saturday, August 30th, 2025. That is the Saturday of Airfest, assuming weather is good. If the weather is bad on Saturday, we will move the contest to Sunday. But either way, you get from range open to range closed to make a qualifying flight. The highest overall verified altitude will be the winner. And it's free to participate as long as you have the rocket. Now, let's talk about the rocket and what you can and can't do, because what you can't do is modify it in almost any way. There are two exceptions. One being you can cut the airframe down to 28 inches because that's how long mine was before it got lost. And that's how long the proper Punisher scale would be because a three inch Punisher comes with 32 inches of airframe. So scaling it down to 2.6, technically 28 would be right. However, Tim delivers them with 32 inch airframes. So that is how they come. They will be allowed with that airframe length. Gives you a little more room for motors, which we will talk about in a little bit. The next only exceptions to modifying the kit are that you may put holes for your electronics bay and for your recovery gear for wires to go through for switches and stuff like that. Basically only holes that are absolutely necessary in the rocket are allowed. Vent holes, stuff like that. You can't go drilling holes in your motor tube to save weight or anything like that. Now here's what else you may not do. You cannot modify the rocket. The rocket is available as a full, you know, ready to go kit that comes with epoxy and a retainer and recovery and all that stuff. What we're looking for here is the base fiberglass parts kit. So you're free to use whatever epoxy, whatever retainer, whatever parachute you want. However, you cannot build the rocket differently than is demonstrated in the official video that is on both my channel and the Wildman Rocketry channel. You can't do composite tip to tip layups. You can't do any additional reinforcements of any of the components. You can't shave down the bulk plate to put it further in the coupler to give yourself more motor room. It has to be built 100% stock with the only variables coming from the stuff that is outside the bare bones kit. Now, of course, this means you cannot add a boat tail. You, you cannot shave the bevels down on the fins to make them sharper. 
you cannot extend it you cannot shorten it you cannot put a custom nose cone on it a nose cone tip any of this stuff it has to be a traditionally built head and deploy wildman 2.6 inch punisher as outlined in the video that's it that's as far as it goes the gist of it is no performance modifications or enhancements you build the rocket stock that's it internal fillets are not necessary on this rocket as demonstrated in the video when i built it if you feel like adding them you're really only hindering yourself so sure go ahead and do that if you want to do that um, but other than that build it exactly as you see in the video or you will be disqualified launch rules you gotta launch it from a regular 1010 rail you cannot use flyaway guides a tower or anything else you're free to bring your own launch pad if you would like to but my preference would be to fly them off the cloud busters provided launch pads for a level playing field you have to use rail buttons they have to be attached to the rocket at the time of flight and upon inspection they have to have remained in place the entire time so don't try and get crafty with me <laughs> the motor choice is up to you you can use any 54 millimeter motor that you can fit in the rocket that will safely fly it so yes that means research motors come aboard you are allowed to play now i want to talk about a little bit of a gray area that some people have brought to my attention regarding the motor and that gray area sort of is based on the fact that there is a tail cone closure available for both Aerotech and Cesaroni rocket motors. Now, the way I see it, the rules say that you cannot modify the rocket, but I'm willing to give some leeway on being allowed to modify the motor, okay? So, snappering people, flying Loki, flying a research motor, or if you're flying a DMS motor, whatever, I will give enough grace for you to create an equivalent in size to the Aerotech or CTI tail cone closure. So you can't make it the same diameter as the base of the rocket because that's not how the Aerotech or CTI one works. It's 54, it has to be that standard size. It may butt against the rocket, but you cannot make a boat tail or tail cone that attaches to the motor case that is the same diameter as the rocket. That is where I'm gonna draw the line. But snappering people do at least get enough leeway to match the base drag advantages of the tail cone closure. While they might not be as good as they could be because it's not the same diameter as the rocket, there is something there and I want the snappering people to have a fair chance in that. As well as the composite case people. If you're doing a DMS motor, an L1000 or whatever, and you want to 3D print something that is the equivalent and the sizes are available for both of those things. So remember, this is gonna be a judgment call. If you make it too big, or it's obviously modified beyond the scope of the Aerotech or CTI rear closures, I'm going to disqualify you. But in terms of modifying motors, go nuts. You wanna take an L1000 and put a huge expansion cone on it. If you think the motor will work, give it a shot by all means, do what you gotta do. Like I said, the contest window is going to be waiver open to waiver close of the competition day, which is slated to be Saturday, August 30th, 2025, with our backup date, of course, being that following Sunday, if Saturday isn't good enough. Waiver open to waiver close. I don't care if your rocket worked great and you got it back and you show up one minute past the waiver closing, one second, then you are disqualified your flight does not count speaking of flights that don't count the rocket not only has to be returned in the window but it has to be brought to me the judge also if you want to help me judge i'm looking for a couple volunteers that might be willing to help that would be awesome i'm trying to rope taylor and shane into it as well but we will see how that goes send me a message rocketvlogs911 at gmail.com if you're interested the rocket has to come back intact and flyable again Cracks and fillets, zippers, anything that would disqualify a certification flight is going to disqualify your entry into this contest. We will be accepting GPS, accelerometer, and barometer based altitudes. So really any commercially available electronic system is going to have an altitude that we will verify. But I would like you to recover the rocket and take the electronics bay apart in front of me, okay? I don't want to have to like really hunt people down for this and I know the featherweight stuff can be a little bit of an interesting tidbit because you download the data as soon as you get to the rocket in a lot of cases. 
I'm willing to work with people on this, obviously, but if you've taken your electronics bay apart before it gets back to me, you're going to be disqualified. Only commercially available altimeters or altimeter kits are allowed in the contest. So yes, if you want to use the egg timer stuff, you can do that, but you can't design and build your own altimeter for this contest. Obviously, all the flights have to meet RSO rules and regulations. And again, please bring the electronics to the judges before you shut them off and before you take the electronics bay apart so we can verify your altitudes. Before you fly the rocket, I or another judge, if anybody volunteers, will need to inspect it. So as of now, my plan is to show up an hour before the waiver opens on contest day. That way we can start checking and approving people's rockets if they want to fly as soon as the waiver opens, which I assume most of you will want to do. I'm planning on making a video about it as well. So if you guys want to talk about your rocket on camera, talk about your motor, whatever else, that'd be cool. Just let me know ahead of time. Like I said, link is in the description to the Discord. I'm going to do my best to keep updates on the plans for this contest in there. That way we have a good point of contact and that's usually the easiest way to reach me. Again, like I said, if you have any other further questions about the contest, no, 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 you cannot modify the rocket. Now, I don't want to scare anybody off with reporting that one person has already put in paperwork for over 20,000 feet because remember, they have to find the rocket and they have one day to do it. We all know that there can be unforeseen things that make it difficult to get a rocket flown or it gets windy so you can't fly it till later in the day or you don't want to fly it till later in the day because it's windy or whatever else. If that rocket doesn't come back to me, within the window and doesn't come back to me as a qualifiable flight, then the next person's going to win it. We see stuff like this with the hamster dance, which is a research rocket motor contest at balls where sometimes all you need is a qualifying flight to win. Somebody could show up with a K-185 or a J-135 and fly their rocket 8,000 feet and still win because everybody else DQ'd. You never know, so don't let that uh, sway you away from giving it your best shot. Now, one last thing I do want to talk about with this contest is people have asked repeatedly about a motor being too long for the rocket and it comes up a lot with people asking if they can move up the electronics bay or do this or do that, stretch the rocket. Obviously, no, as we covered, none of that's allowed. But if you have a rocket with the motor hanging out the back and you can convince the RSOs that it's safe to fly, I'm cool with that. So do what you got to do. Don't modify the rocket, modify the motor. <laughs> and everything else to make it work, all right? Again, the Discord link for the Rocket Vlogs official Discord is in the description. Come join us, we're having a good time over there. If anybody wants to help moderate over there as well, please let me know. I don't really have time to keep up with everything, but I would like to just make it an open link so that people can consistently, uh, you know, just have the same link and I don't have to change it and update it all the time. One last little bit of housekeeping here. We are giving away a $100 Wildman Rocketry gift card on the Anti-Gravity Group YouTube channel, which is the channel for me, Taylor, Shane, and Matt, our podcast. All you have to do to enter is go to the video in the description. It's the video of our double Arcus build and leave a comment. You're automatically entered. We're going to give away the $100 gift card as soon as we hit a thousand subscribers. So if you're not already subscribed, please do that. You don't have to be subscribed to win the gift card, but you know, if you're not subscribed and you do, we're going to get to a thousand faster. My name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a rocket vlogs video and I will see you all at the rocket pasture in Argonia, Kansas. I'm so looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with, especially y'all doing research motors. I know that some people got some nasty plans in their back pocket for this thing. So I hope to see some really cool, really innovative, propulsion and uh some outstanding flights don't forget to subscribe press the like button if you want to help support the channel check out patreon.com slash rocket vlogs my name is brayden and i will see you all next time